how closely is Halo the series going to stick to Halo the video game? Uh, you know, uh, we we announced it, established and announced the the Halo Silver timeline, and really the goal of that was to uh, to be able to let the show sort of exist within its own branch of canon, and so which is a little bit different. So um, very much founded and rooted in canon. Um, so much of what viewers will see and hear and experience uh, and the events they'll see very much uh, canonical, but there are some diversions that we've taken um, specifically to support what the story needed. And you know, the intent of this has always been to give players a differentiated experience from, from the game, just so that we could give them more and, and really let them be able to sit back and engage with Halo in a different way, let us take them on this journey. And so um, there will be, uh, the, the chronology is before the events of Halo Combat Evolved, but there'll be stories and events that you see that maybe we have described in the books or maybe are wholly new. And then there are events that uh, we'll look at from a different perspective and maybe do feel a little bit different than, than players have seen in the game. But hopefully over the course of the nine hours as the story plays out, it'll become very clear why we made some of those decisions. And it was always, always for the betterment of the story or to better understand a character. Pablo, I'm curious for you, what was the key to unlocking Master Chief, such an iconic character? Well, getting into the suit uh, helped a lot. That was the first step, obviously. You know, feeling, feeling how he sees the world, the lens that he sees it through, literally. Um, uh, training, you know, obviously getting myself in shape to be able to manipulate the suit, um, doing a deep dive on, on Halo mythology and lore and learning as much as I could about the universe that I was going to be immersing myself in. And then, um, you know, surrendering myself to the circumstances that uh, the writers had set up for me, which uh, is my job as an actor, you know, to put myself in the world that has been created um, and, and, and let it come alive. You know, in the process of season one, John it goes on a journey of, of discovery about his history and, and his humanity. And it was one that, uh, you know, I, I sent myself on and, and tried to tried to discover as authentically and earnestly as possible. How involved was Steven Spielberg? Uh, he's an EP on this. Yeah, no, it was, um, it was incredible meeting him uh, to sit down. He, uh, uh, he and, and Amblin Entertainment was, were really our first partner when we started on this journey back in 2013. And, uh, you know, it, it was striking. Well, it was striking first to be in a room with um, a, a, uh, a, a genius creator at that level. But also what was really amazing is how clear it was how much he loved video games, how much he respects gamers, and how much he already understood and appreciated about Halo. And so that was an incredible foundation for us to build in. And it was so comforting to, to have you know, this master um, with us really, really as an incredible guiding force um, behind the scenes. Over 20 years, Halo's been in the culture. Why do you think that game has resonated just beyond video games? It's novels, it's graphic novels. And, and now the TV series. Yeah. I think the, some of the themes that go through uh, the franchise are indelible and, and can be related to by everybody. You know, the themes of hope and humanity struggling against great odds are things that uh, are, are great, great things for us to be uh, exploring in, in any time, right? Uh, but then I think why it's, for me personally, from what I observe, why it's why it's lasted as long as it has and been as beloved as it is, and it's also what drew me to it when I got the offer, is the amount and extent and the depth of the mythology and the lore that's been created uh, for the game. You know, the amount of story that's been created by these extraordinary creators um, is the thing that I think keeps coming fans keeps bringing fans back to it because it's just a massive. Uh, sandbox for them to play in and as an actor or a storyteller it's a, a, an incredible resource to have all of this story at your disposal the last question then is going to be the decision uh to have master chief remove his helmet you know it, it wasn't something that um when we set out to do this was a foregone conclusion at all um you know we we had left it open to really understand where the story needed to go but it was always a goal to tell uh, a very character focused story um, and very much focused on the Master Chief and on John. And John as a character, as the person inside the armor, isn't, 
isn't a person we get to explore as much in the games because you're in that first person perspective. One of the biggest decisions that needed to be made is tailoring the entertainment to the medium. And when you're creating a first person shooter video game, uh, you on purpose keep uh, the character vague and he's a symbol, you know, and so he doesn't speak a lot and there's not a lot of character development uh, for the character because you're meant to believe that you're him. You want, you, you want the video game player to help create the experience as the Master Chief. Uh, and we're making a TV show. We're not making a first person shooter. And so we tailored this experience to the best form for long format storytelling. Uh, and there's no rules against taking the helmet off for the Spartans, right? The Spartans have their helmets off and their uh, Mjolnir off constantly uh, throughout the Halo mythology and lore. It's only the chief who doesn't take it off because you're meant to believe that you're him. So as Kiki said, you know, we take it off because we want to, you know, go on a journey with the chief. And in order to relate to your protagonist, in order to empathize with your protagonist, you have to have his face. You have to see how he's feeling about things. So that was a, a decision early on, but that decision doesn't take away from anybody else's version of the chief that they play as when they play the game. And it doesn't take away from Steve Downs iconic version of the chief that he created for the game, right? Those things exist and will remain uh, exactly as they are. And this is our version of this iconic character.